Hey, so if you read the description, um, you'll see that I'm basically just taking a more relaxed and incremental approach to learning stuff. Um, one of them is guitar. I have played music for a long time. I played violin as a kid and then did like just a few guitar lessons here and there um, as a teenager. And then I've played drums on and off for a long time. Um, so I decided this year, you know, I used to like put a lot of pressure on myself to sit down and like learn a song right away or whatever it may be. And, um, you know, after just growing up, the frontal lobe finish forming, whatever it is, uh, and some solid conversation with friends realized that like people who are really good at stuff practice regularly and that I can just sit down and do it and be good at it. Um, so... Uh, one of the things I'll be streaming is learning guitar. This is a Univox. It's awesome. I got it at Emerald City Guitars in Seattle. If you're ever in that area, you should check it out. Um, they have really awesome, like, first of all, their store is gorgeous. Um, yeah, and they just have really good stuff. Um, sorry, it's a little dusty. And I guess it also, like, holds on to oil. And I just put on lotion, so it's a little, you know. Uh, sorry if my heater goes off. I tried to th turn the thermostat down, um, but it may, we'll see. Hopefully it won't go off. It's very loud and annoying. Um, I pulled up a video with Nate Savage from Guitario. I'm considering, I think Fender um, has like a guitar lesson app that I'm considering doing, but if anyone has some recommendations, it would be appreciated. I'll probably have some guest teachers on. I have a couple different friends who play guitar um, and I think it'd be really fun to have them on because some of them are professional musicians or like classical guitar teachers and stuff. So it could be cool. Maybe I'll have my dad on to teach me because he's played for a long time. And um, I actually used to play drums in his band. So anyways, I'm going to start off. It's this video. If, um, if you're watching and have a better way to like show what video I'm going off of in the stream so it's not such a weird experience where I'm just like talking about the fact that I have my phone and this like less than stellar charger charging it um, to do this video from Nate Savage and Guitario. Um, yeah, if there's a better way of running that through, let me know. I know I've seen people do it. Um, I just really did not want the barrier for me to do this to be me figuring out how to put a video in my stream. So anyways, I'm gonna turn the volume down on his a little bit so it's not super loud. Um, he basically runs through in this video, it's called Eight Guitar Chords You Must Know, and I'm happy to put it in the comments or description or whatever um, of this stream. But he runs through different guitar chords. So like, I'm gonna just gonna just tell you all the lessons. I literally just skip past the intros um, and all that to like the actual lesson part. I like my lessons. I learned this just from um, the little bit of guitar that I learned a long time ago that I like tabs, which are like, I don't know if you can see it. Mm, I don't know if it's gonna show up so well because it's so bright. Basically, it shows you, it's like guitar for dummies where it shows you like, hey, put your fingers like this or whatever. So um, if you're watching this and you learn guitar from like scratch, 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 I'm super sorry if this is like, it feels like I'm cheating because I do have like the basics. And by the basics, I mean, I know like the intros to a few songs. Um, and like the chord progression for Green Day's Good Riddance. So um, I've been to say that I do not know how to play guitar in the same way that like me being able to find a bathroom in Spanish does not mean that I can speak Spanish, um, but I'm working on it with Duolingo. So anyways, um, this lesson starts off with G major. Um, I'm just gonna run through this video off my phone. And so G major, coincidentally, also, excuse you, also the opening uh, chord for Green Day's Good Riddance for any other 90s hams that um, heard that on the radio and or in the grocery store for their entire lives. And you can warn you a couple of things. I'm coming right down on the very tip of my finger. Scoop I'm not being lazy and letting my finger hang over like this. That's a so, really part of making cool. You want to come right down on the very tip yeah, of my so finger. Yeah, so you're not coming down the your finger like my finger that. Is right behind the fret line. And behind the fret Fret wires so like these bad boys. And try to come right behind the 
Right. Something like that. I also I cut my nails before this second, because previously they have definitely gotten away. The like these ones aren't so great. So fourth. Second. What? Oh, this is my second. How is that my second? Second, third. Hold on. Let me look at this. That's insane. I didn't realize. Okay, I'm going to back up the video. I didn't realize this entire time I'm playing the G chord wrong. So apparently, you have the pinky down here. Oh god! Uh, and this—it's also important to not be lazy. Uh, one of my friends is going to be on talking about that. Okay, so he does have his index finger raised up, which is the first finger. So apparently, on tabs, you count like one, two, three, four. Yeah, index is one, not your thumb. So. You leave this one open, which I think is really interesting. Um, I'm sure it has to do with being able to change. So that would be a G major chord. Doesn't sound very pretty, I'll be honest. Woo, that is a stretch. These fingers are trembling. A friend also tuned this and I fixed it a little bit because he tunes he just one of them down, so that's a good way to tell that you messed up. That was like a little bit hit before, so. They should all be not stopped. Um, I had a friend tune this and what he did, like I think one of these a little bit lower than I'm used to, so I tried to fix it so it may not be perfect. So if you have perfect pitch and you're listening to this and you're angry at me, I'm sorry. Uh, the whole thing about this is that I am not a professional. Okay, we got the G major. Feeling good. Nate Savage, tell us what else is up. Right behind the fret, right on the tip of your finger. Strum all six strings. I'm going to hold that just to like. And like I said, you can make this with your first, second, and third. So holding it is also good because like it just helps you with that muscle memory. So I like to pop off and then come back on to remind myself how to get there. Go the right way because apparently I've been doing it wrong for many, many years. Your wrist too far this way when you're making chords that can hurt after a while. So my wrist is going to be perfectly straight. It's going to be a little bit perfectly straight. Oh man, this is wrist gymnastics for sure. So let's learn the C major chord. This is a great C chord to let you know if you're coming down on the very tips of your fingers, and I'll show you why. Oh, goody. I can't wait. Put your third finger on Bring the third fret fingers, of the please. fifth string. Right behind the fret. Oh, God. The counting second gets finger, me every time. Second fret of the D string. First. And your first oh, finger God. on the first fret of the B string. First finger, first now fret of the B string. string out and just strum the top five Sure. Strings. Go back to the tabs. Let's see. Okay. So Here's this is the C major. So the first finger goes here, second finger goes, let me count. This is like, I feel like a child. Count, so I go one, two, three. Yeah, second finger, then it, it looks like it's like one down, so it's over here. And then the third finger goes up here. So this one's a stretch, um, luckily. Um, I've probably practiced one a few times because I think that this is, this is, well, uh, also a chord used in Green Day's Good Riddance, which this reference point is an embarrassing reference point, I'll be honest. Um, but it should be more, or maybe not more embarrassing, because I guess, well, I was going to say it could be more embarrassing for Green Day because they use the chords that are used in this, like, eight guitar chords you should know lesson. But um, I would not be embarrassed if I made an insane amount of money off an intro lesson to guitar. Um, I think that that is a fine accomplishment. Anyways, back to this Guitario video, C major. So it looks like from the tab, I don't know if you can see, probably not. It's my thing all. And your first thing on the first fret of the B string. Um, basically, yeah, you, there's no way you can see that. Anyways, it has an X above the one that you leave open. Not too bad. That's not a good I can still right? hear that I'm like blocking some. Nope. Like he said, a little bit of buzzing. On my fingers. And don't come down right on the very tips of the Listen to this. <laughs> Almost all the notes in the chord disappeared. So that is a great chord for telling you if you're working on coming down the tips of your fingers. Really good. So yeah, I'm going to like cock it up a the little bit more like this. Oh god, it hurts so bad already.
Oh, that's a good point. So he's just saying that like when you're here with the C, which I need to get better for sure at this like hand situation, this hand stitch, but that it's super easy, I guess, because of the way that he instructed us to do go to the G. So if you're at the C like this and you want to go to G, you literally just pop these two up. This comes down, the pinky, that's what I mean by this, uh, comes down and then your index finger goes up, which is indeed uh, to his credit, a much better way, ah, a much better way of, of doing it um, because I think if I had done it the original way that I was taught or learned, um, whichever it was, that it's a much more complicated transition. So that is really nice. So, like, if you're trying this um, and you've done this on your own or you're thinking about it, literally, like, and this is not because I'm saying that I am like an expert on guitar. This is just from like my experience of trying to take many shortcuts and learning other nonsense and then realizing that like uh, teachers had a point with the things that they were doing. Um, somebody once told me, I'm not telling you what to do to be bossy. I'm telling you what to do to make your life easier. Um, I'm definitely paraphrasing there. But um, typically when somebody has more experience in something and they're telling you to do stuff, it's because they may know a thing or two. So I'm going to try that again. The, I think it was a C major chord. Um, so it goes from here. And then if I were super quick, I could do it a lot faster. But for now, I'd go here and then pop these two bad boys up and put this one down and go here. And then I could go back really quickly too. Oh, I should There's a reason at the top one. The buzzing one hopefully will get better someday. Today is not the day. Um, if I use my second, third, and fourth fingers. If I use my first, second, and third, then he goes forward, and I'm sorry I'm skipping through this. I just feel like it'd be very boring if I watch this minute by minute. Um, and I've done it already once. Um, just I would started streaming on Twitch. I didn't really like the user experience. Um, I'd done it on my phone. Forgot to put it on airplane mode. Got mode. Got a phone call. Also, like I'd swiped up to chat um, with somebody, and it accidentally ended the stream, and I found that annoying. Um, I'm just more comfortable on YouTube. Um, I've definitely watched people on Twitch, but it was my first time streaming on Twitch, um, Twitch IRL anyways, and I didn't really love it. So here we are. <sighs> All right, to the D major. A major D, Stra. Um, so apparently you leave these top two just open, and by open, I mean you don't hit them when you go down. This one I remember. It's one of the only chords whose name and like structure I remember because I literally think of it as a D, you know, those, like this triangle that happens. To the that's what it makes me think of. That's one thing that kind of helps get your fingers in that kind of tight little space that you have to make for this thing. Are you talking about memorizing guitar chord shapes? Do you think that you can do to help you memorize the Oh, I did it wrong. I did it right. But I bet you that transition would be a lot easier. If I just got used to copying these sounds and switching my whole time. So what Nate recommends in this section of the video, which again I will link to below, is a really valid point of just like doing it and going like, yes, that's a D chord. All right, that's a, Jesus, what is it? It's like a C major, I think and then getting used to those transitions. He doesn't say this, but he will eventually. Getting used to those transitions and just going over and doing the G chord. All right, so he's doing an E major first next. Grab the first, fret first finger, of the first fret right now, of the G string. G, G string. <laughs> um, G string first and then second and third are just up on these. So that's a little bit cram. Now, like I said, but that finger placement does also help because if you want to switch over from that to another, oh my god, my computer sounds like it's overheating, so I get for keeping running with a MacBook Pro just because I like that it has a CD drive and hella USB ports and stuff, which is very important. Um, and then we get into the A major, which this one is a squeeze for sure. Um, anyone who plays guitar is probably making fun of me, but um, I feel it's a squeeze 
Um, and this was one of the ones that when I had like longer nails, so friends, if you have longer nails, this one is a struggle with longer nails. And it's, I, I bet you have like big fingers too. It's probably hard. Luckily, like I have fairly slender fingers, but if I didn't, this would be a real pain. So this one's open. This one you don't, the top you don't play at all for the A major. So just, which is a very nice transition to the other one that we just learned. Oh, I don't really like how it sounds, though, but it is an easy transition. Okay. These are all sounding very familiar. So A major. This one's a little challenging. If anybody knows what the like dark indicators like uh there's like you know filled in circles, white circles. What those mean, I think I get the gist of it. Um I can definitely Google it, but an explanation in here would be great. That way other people don't have to Google it. Do that same process, put it on, leave it there, take it off. So he says you shake it off and, and then come right back to, to it. You can work on switching between that chord and, the, and another one. For example, switching between your E and your A chord is e pretty common. So that's a change that you might want to work on. So. Oh. Have I been doing the E one wrong? Hold on. Sorry. Let me bounce right, back for a second. Okay. I'm going to go back to the E because that didn't sound the same way his sounded. So E, oh yeah, so his, it's slightly up. So the E one is up here. There's that heater, I'm gonna turn that off. That is annoying, do you hear it? It's like having a blow dryer just here. Which means I'm going to end this soon because it's going to be very cold shortly. Um, so I was just switching between the A and the E. So that's, and then I was just doing kind of like a rhythmic thing, um, which like when you're first learning, and I'm saying this like I'm an expert, but this is literally just because I've had multiple sessions with my dad of him like running me through here's how you do something specific because um, as I mentioned before, like I've always taken a very like, quick approach, like I always expect myself to be really good at stuff right off the bat. Um, and people used to tell me like, oh, just be patient, da, 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 da. And I just felt, I just didn't get it. Like I didn't get why I needed to be patient, um, why that was a good thing, why, and like, it just didn't make sense. And I would hear of other people who like spent two hours a day practicing. Um, but I guess in my head, I thought that they were doing that once they were already good. I genuinely did not understand until maybe last year that like you practice like regularly and then um that is how you eventually get good you're not like good at it and so you practice more uh, and i had a gymnastics teacher as a kid who would say perfect practice makes perfect which i really like too because it's like a no shortcuts point of view um at the same time i don't think and i'm sorry for this tangent like mid uh mid me just learning these simple chords but i really um I, oh man, what was I going to say? Uh, I guess it's like, I just don't think, huh? She would say perfect practice makes perfect. That's true. Oh, I was going to say that you like, you also shouldn't let not being perfect stop you from doing stuff. Um, uh, there is this band called Potty Mouth that I interviewed for bands in town a while ago. And one of the girls in the band was telling me that she'd read uh, Bill, Viv Albertine's book. I think it's like, uh, called like music, 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 close, 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 boys, 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 like something like that. Um, and she is in a band called the slits and they're really incredible. And, um, I, which, which girl was it from potty mouth? Oh, it wasn't Abby, man. It's really going to bother me. Anyways, they're great. You should look them up. What I'm trying to say is that she was telling me it really inspired her because Viv in the book talks about how, she felt the same way I was feeling like, oh, you really have to be good before you like do something. Um, and then she realized like that dudes in other punk bands weren't necessarily super good at their instruments. This shine is driving me bonkers. Um, 
but they were still doing it. And like, what's to stop her from doing it too, um, just as a person. And obviously I think sometimes like women or just like people that are not like the majority group, um, we feel a lot of times like we have to be really good at something before we do it and put ourselves out there. Um, and I think that there's, you know, there's a fine line between like taking pride in what you do and delivering a, a good product, which I think we should all deliver stuff that we're proud of um, and not just be throwing stuff out on the wall and hope it sticks. Cause I think it, that's like makes for a noisy world. And I think that that's like not the greatest philosophy, but, um, but I think it is also important to find a balance in there of like um, practicing, practicing well, not letting not being perfect hold you back um, at the same time. Like there's an element, I guess, of also like still having fun with it. Like um, there's some things in life that I've gotten like decently good at and I couldn't figure out why with those things I was more kind of confident in my ability because I was doing better and I was better at them than how I felt about music. And I realized it's because I always took music super, super seriously. And so when I would get into a drum lesson or get into like a situation where I felt like, okay, I'm going to go in and by the end of this week, I'm going to have this nailed that I was super hard on myself. And I would end up like throwing my drumsticks and crying. And there was a punching bag in my garage when I was growing up and I was spending more time like thrashing my knuckles on that punching bag than I did playing drums because I'd be so pissed that I wasn't like getting something right. Um, perhaps that should have been an indicator that things like guitar that come more naturally to me, uh, I should have stuck with, but maybe I stuck with guitar or with drums because uh, I'm a glutton for punishment. I don't know. The coordination part is crazy hard for me. The independence is crazy hard for me, but I also think I just like that challenge. So anyways, all that being said, I think it's important that when you're learning stuff to be patient with yourself, to have fun with it. Um, and all of that was literally stemming from me just going like my dad taught me when he was teaching me uh, songs. Cause that's, you know, when you're a kid, you just want to learn like your favorite songs is like some basic um, strumming patterns. So when I'm messing around and going from the, what was it like a major E major to a major, which is just this one to this one. And I'm doing it. I realized something like that man what was it it sounds a bit like man what song is it i think i don't know the other day it sounded like a social distortion song but maybe i'm wrong about that anyways E major was the one that I was just doing. Just a quick review, one up here, two over here. You hit them all, and then he was saying for the A major, I'm just gonna scoot forward to that part so I don't mess it up. It's, you go from. Or made it feel a lot like a kink song to me or maybe Velvet Underground and playing it slow sound like social distortion so there was my confusion but he was just showing that um and by he if you're just hopping in on this part he is uh, this Nate Savage on this guitar video um so that was the end of the major chords um E major and then he pops into the minor chords which is rad so I'm just scrolling through to that part of the video Oh, here we go. E minor. So E minor, apparently, that's easy. It's just these two, I guess. Wow, oh, minor chords are more depressing. I like it. So then an A minor. Oh, yeah. I was basically playing that earlier. I knew it seemed like something, but I also knew it was not what I meant to play. So it's first here. I'll strum all five strings in the lead. Oh. Oh. You see how this chord looks exactly like a major shape, only it moved over one string That's nice. So those are some of the chords that you're not playing. Of course, the chords are not. Ooh, that feels very kill, though. I like it. 
anyways, thank you for watching. Um, I will, I don't, I've just my first time like live streaming on YouTube. Um, so presumably afterwards I can put the link for the video that I was doing in here. I like it. Um, I like this teacher. His voice is not annoying. I like that he has the tabs and they have like a good split screen of where his like, mm. you know, neck hand is and where his strumming hand is. Um, I think those are really helpful. And I do like that he explains running through all of the chords and like how this, um, it's helpful to me at least when someone's teaching me but they tell me why that like this index finger is up because for sure it's more comfortable not to do that. I'm not going to do it because I don't practice it that way. But that is helpful when someone's like, oh, you do that because then it's easier for you to just pop over to this other commonly used chord and move around better because without that context, I will for sure take the easy way out. And, um, yeah, that's it. Thanks so much. And um, hopefully I'll be back on doing guitar soon. Probably Octopad for sure. I might do some visual arts. I'm sorry about my ugly thermostat over here. Um, I wish it wasn't so hideous. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, and again, if you have any recommendations for how to improve the stream or like guitar lesson tracks that you've done online that you like. Thanks.